Well, BHP is producing $100 million cash every day. It makes 44 cents of profit for every dollar of sales. It's an incredibly successful corporate machine. But costs are rising, some of its workers are in revolt, and it's spending a colossal amount of money on new development. I spoke to CEO Marius Kloppers just after he announced a 6% drop in first half profit. Well, Marius Kloppers, BHP seems to be changing from a cash producing machine into a cash eating machine with you know, $27 billion worth of projects. But doesn't that mean that the current generation of shareholders are actually financing the benefits for future generations? Alan, basically, if you look at our returns on capital over the last couple of years, for every dollar on a pre-tax EBIT basis that we've invested, last year we got a 44% return. So it's been absolutely in our interest to try and build these projects and invest in them. As we go forward, we've obviously got, got to cut the cloth to, um, to fit. And uh, so th therefore the comments today about which projects we're going to do, which ones we're not going to do, and so on and so forth. The only problem is that the work that you're undertaking at the moment, the expansion of Olympic Dam and the expansion in the Pilbara and so on, is all happening in the face of soft commodity prices. And com uh, China's economy is slowing down as well. It's not in recession, yeah. but it's slowing down. And I wonder if you're concerned that the investment is taking place at the peak of the cycle. Um, Alan, I think that the iron ore price has clearly moderated a little bit. What we've seen that as the steel production in, in China has moderated somewhat, though, the local domestic production, which is high cost, has also exited. So in a, in a certain sense, there's a bit of a buffer or a, or a hedge in iron ore price there. Um, and if we then take a scenario where freight costs at the moment are as low as they've ever been, I think it's $7 or a little bit more to take a ton of iron ore from Western Australia to China. If you then look at what Australia earns on a ton of iron ore, you know, at the harbour in Port Hedland, it's a very good number and certainly one where our investment projects, even if that price comes back a little bit more, uh, we, we're going to make very good returns on those, on those projects. Well, one of the significant problems you're facing at the moment is the industrial action in the Bowen Basin, which seems to be not so much about money but about management control of the operation. And there have been suggestions that instead of expanding your operations there, you'll actually invest in Indonesia instead. Is that a possibility? Yeah, Alan, I'm a little concerned that your last three questions all started with the word problem. The way that I look at it is that, you know, there may be an opportunity here to resolve the issue in the Bowen Basin. What is at stake here for us, clearly, is that we are making uh, large investments and the solution that we find in our current operation we know will in due course scale to the, uh, to the new expanded operations. As we expand, uh, management's prerogative to manage uh, assumes an even greater importance than the already high role that we, we normally assign that to. So it is extraordinarily, import, extraordinarily important that we get this right. But is there a stick behind the negotiations that you might withdraw or cancel expansion in Australia if the unions don't toe the line? Um, Alan, I think that um, you, uh, from our perspective, the projects that we've committed to and that we're building, uh, we'd like to continue to stay the course, build them uh, because we committed to them. It, it would take a fairly big event for us to say we're going to stop, slow down or otherwise cancel a project. I think a more immediate problem is that some of our operations, given some of those price movements that you've, that you've seen, not all of our uh, operations are making profit to the same mm -hmm. extent at the moment. I mean, uh, that's probably more the, uh, the avenue that, that you're going to see us act in, where, a, where an existing operation doesn't make profit. We're probably likely to say, look, this is not making profit, let's curtail production. The merger of Glencore and Extrata has got the mining industry a buzz at the moment. Do you think that there will be a lot more consolidation in the industry in the uh, months and years ahead, or is it a one-off? Long run, I think the, the, the trend is always towards uh, consolidation in, in, in industries, particularly in the mining industry where we consume the resources uh, every day. Uh, that constitute the lifeblood. I mean, people add resources both by the drill bit and then commercially. So transactions are a normal part of our industry. And what about BHP? You tried to take over Rio Tinto and Potash Corporation. I presume you're not out of the game now. Uh, what about taking on Anglo-American? Gosh, Alan, we, we never speculate. Um, uh, I always, uh, you know, perhaps to use my predecessor, Chip Goodyear's words, 
Um, you know, M&A is an opportunistic thing. Um, I've, I've absolutely no doubt that over time, uh, you know, we will do more transactions, um, but we're pretty busy at the moment, and uh, you know, difficult for me to speculate on any individual uh, individual transaction. Sounds like you're not ruling anything out, though. Um, that's probably one way of saying it, Alan. Thanks very much, Marius Kloppers. Thank you. Good, good to talk to you.